Hi everyone, this is Cooking with Kurt. Today my husband Donald and I are going to show you how to make ube and saimada. This is a Filipino style brioche bread stuffed with ube halaya and topped with grated Edam cheese or as we Filipinos call it, queso de bola. This recipe was heavily requested by a lot of you. Thank you all so much for this request. We hope you liked this video. A lot of ensaimada and brioche recipes require a stand mixer in order to create that elastic gluten structure in the bread. But today, we're going to show you how to make the same thing by hand. Using our muscles. Exactly. We've been working out just for this. Oh. <laughs> so if you're not using a stand mixer, some extra steps need to be taken to make ensaimada. The dough requires a strong gluten structure, so everything we do here is to promote gluten development. To start, take a small saucepan, add in half a cup of whole milk, and heat over medium heat till it reaches a minimum of 180 degrees Fahrenheit. This deactivates the whey protein which may hinder gluten development. That's right. When your milk is hot enough, pour the hot milk into a large mixing bowl and whisk it which will help to cool it down. Once it has cooled down to around 110 to 115 degrees Fahrenheit, add in one tablespoon or seven grams of instant yeast, which is the entire packet as it's sold here in the US. Whisk this yeast in thoroughly so it gets dissolved into the milk. Dissolving the yeast into the milk at this step is necessary if you're not using a stand mixer because the yeast will not dissolve into the dough if you're kneading it by hand. When the yeast has fully dissolved into the milk, add in three large eggs and whisk them in. Then add in two and three fourth cups of all-purpose flour and mix in the flour by hand just till you get a cohesive dough and you don't see any more dry flour. Cover this with plastic wrap and let it sit at room temperature for 30 minutes. Letting it rest at this point allows for the gluten structure in the dough to get fully hydrated with milk before it gets kneaded. Again, this is only necessary if you're kneading it by hand. After 30 minutes, turn the dough onto a smooth, clean surface. Add in three tablespoons of granulated sugar and one teaspoon of salt, and fold this into the dough with your hands. We waited till now to add the sugar and salt because both sugar and salt can hinder gluten development. Next, add in 10 tablespoons of room temperature unsalted butter. Press and fold the butter into the dough by hand. A stand mixer with the hook attachment usually has enough mechanical power to blend the butter evenly into the dough. But to do this even blending by hand, we need to use a technique called fraisage in French, where we use the palm of our hands, press the dough out and away from you, and create long palm width streaks like this. This imitates the strong mechanical force of a stand mixer. Then scrape the dough into the middle and repeat. Continuing to do this fully incorporates the butter, salt, and sugar evenly into the dough. Do this pressage style kneading for about 15 minutes. After a while, you'll notice as you scrape the dough towards the center, it will become more elastic as the gluten is forming. After about 15 minutes of using this pressage technique and you see that your dough has a more elastic texture, we're going to finish off the kneading using a slam and folding technique, which is a great workout for your arms. So it's slam, fold, and turn. Pick up the dough and slam it with some force onto the counter. Then take up the dough closest to you and fold it away from you. Do a quarter turn and repeat. Slam it down, fold, and quarter turn. Keep doing this for about 20 minutes. This finishes off the development of the gluten structure. You're done when the dough passes what's called the window pane test. Take a little dough, form a square, and stretch it till it becomes so thin you can see a little light passing through it, but it still feels stretchy and elastic. Then grease a clean bowl, form the dough into a ball, place it in your greased bowl, and cover tightly with plastic wrap. 
Now, if you're using a stand mixer with a dough hook attachment, just put all of the dough ingredients into the mixing bowl and mix it at medium speed for 15 to 20 minutes until it forms a cohesive dough, has a soft and elastic texture, and passes that window pane test we showed earlier. We're going to leave this at room temperature for one hour, then leave it in the fridge overnight for a minimum of 12 hours. This will slow down the fermentation of the yeast, chill the butter, making it easier to shape. Next, we're gonna make the ube filling. Now, you can make the ube filling before the overnight step, leave it in the fridge, and take it out the next day, or you can make it the next day after the dough has rested in the fridge overnight. To make the ube filling, set up a double boiler over medium heat. Add in one cup of ube halaya, three tablespoons of butter, one teaspoon of ube extract, and one fourth teaspoon of salt. If you're using reconstituted ube powder to make the one cup of ube paste, add an extra one tablespoon of sugar to the mixture in the double boiler. But if you're using ready-made ube halaya from a jar, which is already sweetened like we are today, there's no need to add extra sugar. Mix this together for about five minutes until the butter melts and you have the consistency of a spreadable paste. Then remove it from the heat and let it cool to room temperature. After your dough has rested in the fridge for a minimum of 12 hours, you're ready to form the Ensaimada buns. You can either use egg tart molds or brioche molds like this. Ideally, the top diameter of your mold should be 3.5 to 4 inches. The ones we have here have a top diameter of 3.8 inches. If you don't have these molds, you can also just form the buns and place them on a sheet pan lined with parchment paper. They just won't have the corrugated pattern at the bottom, traditional to Ensaimada. If you are using molds, generously butter 12 egg tart or brioche molds and arrange them on a sheet pan for easy handling. The dough should have doubled in size from when you put it in the fridge. Put some oil on a paper towel and lightly grease your rolling pin to prevent your dough from sticking. Place the dough onto a clean surface and divide the chilled dough into 12 equal pieces. I'm just using my hands to approximate similar weights and visually approximating similar sizes between each of the 12 balls. Then take each ball and lightly press them down with your cupped hand while doing a circular motion. It's sort of like making a sphere with Play-Doh when we were kids. This tightens and smoothens the skin of the dough. Do this with all 12 balls. Then take one of the dough balls Using a rolling pin, roll it out into a rounded rectangle shape, about 5 inches by 10 inches in size. Spoon a heaping 1 tablespoon of the prepared ube filling onto the middle, and then spread it into a thin layer. Be careful the ube doesn't come too close to the edges of the dough. Then from the long 10 inch end to the other long 10 inch end, tightly roll the dough back over the filling forming a log. Just know that the log may stretch and contract as you roll it up since the dough is elastic. Once the log is formed, stretch the ends slightly to create tapered ends like this. Then tightly coil the log to form a spiral bun, tucking the end underneath. Place this coiled bun into a buttered egg tart mold. We're going to repeat this with all 12 portions of dough. Loosely cover the buns with plastic wrap and let them proof at room temperature for another three hours. While we're waiting for the buns to proof, we're going to make the topping. Take a small bowl, add four tablespoons of room temperature butter and four tablespoons of powdered sugar. Mix them with a small spoon till it forms a smooth and creamy consistency. Set this aside. Then take some Edam or Gouda cheese. Today we're using Edam, which is the Western equivalent in the US for queso de bola in the Philippines. Grate them on the side of the cheese grater using the small round holes with long strokes like this. We want the cheese to form long and thin strings. Do this until you get about two cups of grated Edam cheese. Set this aside. After letting them proof for three hours, the Ensaimada buns will have doubled in size and look very puffy. Preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, then prepare an egg wash by adding in one large egg, 
and two teaspoons of whole milk. Whisk this together till smooth. Then lightly brush the top of each bun with this egg wash. We're going to bake these in our preheated oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 18 to 20 minutes or until the ensaimada buns are puffed up and golden brown. If you have a thermometer, the buns are done when they read about 185 to 190 degrees Fahrenheit in the middle of the bun. Be careful not to overbake the buns. When the internal temperature reaches past 200 degrees Fahrenheit, the ensaimada will be a little dry on the inside and have a crusty outside, which some people might prefer. We like our ensaimada to have a soft and moist texture. Once they're out of the oven, let them cool slightly for about 10 minutes. Then transfer them from the molds onto a cooling rack and let them cool on the rack for an additional 20 minutes. Then using a bread knife, smear the top of each bun with a very light layer of the prepared sugar butter topping. Finally, top each bun with about two tablespoons of grated Edam cheese. And there it is, soft, moist ensaimada topped with butter, sugar, cheesy goodness, and filled with all that delicious ube. Amsarap! Mmm, yum! So good. That sweet, buttery, and cheesy combo is so good. And I love that ube flavor. Mm -hmm. oh. Thank you all so much for watching. Please let us know in the comment section below if you're planning to make this ube and saimada. Send us pictures of your creations on Facebook and Instagram. The links are in the description section below. And if you like this video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Cooking with Kurt. And don't forget to click on the bell so you get notified when we post new cooking videos. Maraming salamat! salamat.